Oh look, he's a kitty. Mwah. You gonna sit? You gonna sit with me? Maybe later. Okay. Hi, I'm poet and writer Chase Spivey. So I had an idea for a video for today, and that is a poetry reading vlog. I have quite a few poetry books that I purchased in the last year that I haven't gotten through. Like, I purchased so many poetry books that it probably wasn't just, I, I, I bought too many books last year. I bought too many books last year. I thought today I would just try and read through a bunch of the poetry books that I read last year. I'm not really gonna give myself a time limit on this. If it runs into tomorrow, that's totally cool by me. But I put together a group of poetry books that I got within the last year maybe a little longer on maybe like two of them that I'd love to get through and I'm gonna take my time with them I'm not gonna be a rush if I only get through one or two today I'm gonna still count it as a win but I'm gonna show you what the books I want to get through are and then I'm just gonna do kind of a reading vlog and kind of comment on them as I go so first up Magic City Gospel by Ashley M. Jones next up Double Jinx by Nancy Reddy. Field or is it Feld? By Joss Charles. The Octopus Museum. By Brenda, this is gonna be the hardest last name. Brenda Shaughnessy. Post-Colonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz. Moving House by Theophilus Quek. Deaf Republic by Ila Kaminsky. This one's not a poetry book so much as like a poetry learning experience because it's not even quite like a craft book but this is poem crazy by Suzanne Goldsmith Wil Woolridge this will of course be the last one if I happen to get to that one today I probably won't finish it obviously that's a lot of books I have chosen three six seven eight books but poetry books are pretty small so I'm gonna start with Magic City Gospel and give myself permission that if any of these happen to be poetry books that I'm not enjoying, I can put them down. I need to read at least, let's say, let's say five poems. If I'm five poems in and I'm hating it, I can put it down. But I'm going to give all of them at least the five poems. And I'm going to just read through and share my thoughts as they come. And that's my plan for this afternoon. So the first book is going to be Magic City Gospel, which was recommended to me by Michelle Flores. And I don't tend to annotate my books, but in poetry collections, I tend to put a little star by the ones that I like the most. So I couldn't find a pencil, but I have a pen for all my favorites. Hang on, here we go. This poem, Eating Red Dirt in Greensboro, Alabama. Is really cute but like really interesting also like it's about literally eating dirt I'm just gonna read it I'm just gonna read it I ate red dirt for the first time with Aunt Hattie big brown blind angel who listened to local crimes on her police scanner and then later on I realized how citified I really was scared of something so full of local germs but was it a crime to fear eating dirt finally my southern pride made me put Put it to my lips, resist the acidic pull of bile from my in my throat, and for the first time I felt like a local swallowing this bittersweet crime. I really like that. This collection is really interesting. She just she just had one a poem about Michael Brown. That was amazing. That one got a star. She uses music a lot, like like songs. Like she she the title will have a song like Sammy Davis Jr. sings to Michael Brown Jr. But there's just some like really lovely musicality to the the cadence of her poems and the way she writes the poems and you enjoying this setup today I really like this collection I like the musicality in her voice she kind of is intermixing poems directed towards black people who've been brutalized by the police system especially to former slaves I say former especially to slaves who died as slaves um, and she intermixes that with just like glimpses of her now like her in high school uh, it's it's interesting there's a lot of history but because it's directed at a person in history I don't know where I was going with that thought <laughs> I just like it
couple of these poems have been about food and because it's Alabama so it's like good home southern cooking a couple of them have been about that and it's just making me really have this craving for cornbread pancakes or cornmeal pancakes have you ever had a cornmeal pancake like if you live in the south obviously you probably have but oh man they're good I kind of want one I don't have a recipe for one Maybe tomorrow I'm having cornmeal pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> Finished Magic City Gospel. I really liked it. I, it had a nice mix of, of history and food and family and kind of a growing up. It had a lot of looking into Southern culture and into black culture and the black experience and black history. Actually, I think by the time this video goes up, it's going to be February. So this is a phenomenal pick for Black History Month. I mean, she goes into history throughout America. She's directing these poems at many historical figures, um, many tragedies, and and some some her own family. Like I said earlier, lots of food references, which you know it's Southern when you get the food references. So. Uh, really fantastic read. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, next up, gonna be Double Jinx by Nancy Reddy, which was a book that Jen Campbell had on her recommendation list. Oh, it was also a National Poetry Series selection. First impressions are Nancy Reddy is a really good writer. She, her poetry is like, it moves. A beautiful, I, the, the story she's telling is weaving so many things in both of the first two poems. So much is going on and it's all so beautifully tied together. I think I'm, I'm in for another really good collection it looks like. <laughs> There's a lot of kind of fairy tale retelling and magical realism aspects going on, which I think is probably why Jen Campbell recommended this one. It's pretty good. It also has this long one, The Case of the Double Jinx, that's about Nancy Drew's stories, but like woven in with this plot of like cheating spouse kind of. It's very interesting. There's it's a lot of storytelling, which is kind of cool in poetry. Okay, I got hungry, so I'm gonna have some dinner and probably watch a little YouTube while I eat and then I will be right back to reading Double Jinx. This is an interesting page because every other poem has been like pretty long and then this one is just, just the one line. It creates such an impact when there's a poem that's so short like that in a collection that otherwise isn't. Don't you think so? Look at those fuzzy white paws. Very nice. Good job. Section three so far has been different from the other two sections. So it starts with our wilderness period and then each poem doesn't have a title. Like they're short, they don't take up the whole page, but it seems like it's one continuous poem rather than ooh, all the poems previously have had their own titles which is interesting <gasps> there she is there's a little cora you get all the kitties in this one yeah i finished reading double jinx it was good it kind of reminded me of carol ann duffy who writes the like um women's versions of various uh fables, folklore, legends, myths, etc. It's that kind of thing. It focuses on women and it's not quite as direct as Caroline Duffy's work. And like, that's like as far as the connection goes, like their writing styles are completely different. <laughs> They're not comparable writing styles, I don't think. It's really, it's beautiful, it's well written. I would have to go back to this one and really sit down to like figure out what the different stories are. Cause I only recognize some of them, some of them it was like there was like a vague recognition, but it wasn't that clear what legend or story she was talking about for that. I, it was really good though. It was very beautifully written. Yes, so to 
two down. I was a little ambitious with this whole plan because it's already 7.30. I only started at three and then I like had to have dinner and stuff. So I'm gonna get started on Field, Feld by Josh Charles. We'll see, the other two poets were American from Alabama and New Jersey it said. Oh, okay, Nancy Reddy has lived all over, but she works in New Jersey. So two different US poets. And then Joss Charles, so this one, ah, it's another American. <laughs> Joss Charles, oh, it's a trans poet, okay. So we're reading a lot of American poetry <laughs> today, apparently with my pile. Uh, I will start this and we'll see how far I get tonight. And if I don't get that far, actually this, this these poems are so short. I think I'm at least gonna get this one done, but I wanna get through the pile. So I think this vlog is gonna go into tomorrow, but I'm gonna start this one. Ugh, get back under my blanket. Does anyone else need to read under a blanket? Because I get cold <laughs> when I'm just sitting for a long time. I start to get cold. And also the blanket helps so when like the cat's on your lap, you can just scoop the whole blanket up and move them rather than have to like move the cat and they become liquidy. You have like a cup to contain the liquid cat. This is a Pulitzer Prize finalist. This should be good. All right. <gasps> and there was a bookmark inside. This one has flaps though. I was gonna use that as a bookmark. Maybe I'll have the bookmark for a different book. Here we go, third poetry book of the day. They've been really different so far and this looks like it's going to be different as well. We'll see how I get on with this style because it's so spaced out. Sometimes I just don't like that, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, straight off the bat, this is written in dialect. Are they all? Oh boy. So you know, like, if you had to read the Fairy Queen, like, much older books where they're, they're not, like, written like books are today, there's not, like, a standard spelling? Oh, can you see this? I'm not sure this is going to be the collection for me because of that. And like I said, I will give it five poems, but I didn't realize that before. And now as I'm reading it, I'm not sure I can get through that. It, it starts to make me tired. <laughs> it's you basically, it's translation work rather than reading, but they're very short. I'm going to try. Okay. So I give it five five poems and I'm not sure why it's being written that way so I'm looking it up. This is from Milkweed who is the publisher for the book um, it says uh, Charles stakes her claim on the language available to speak about trans experience reckoning with the narratives that have come before by reclaiming the language of the past in Charles electrifying trans transliteration of English Chaucerian oh Chaucer oh that where it comes from in affect but revolutionary in effect what is old is made new again I don't know if I like it though uh, one of the reviews on the back is by Tracy K Smith New York Times Josh Charles blends uh, Ben's language via willful spelling willful spelling is not always a good thing <laughs> to a place where it must be parsed slowly struggled through read not so much with the brain as the mouth through the strange labor of deciphering the text of field i think it is field because in the context of one of the poems it was field i come to understand that charles is transmitting an experience that i must allow to travel from her body to into mine i don't know that i'm up for that right now <laughs> as my third book of the day translating is a big ask and I didn't like the first three poems enough. I didn't, like I said, in just the first, oh, five poems. In the first five poems, it wasn't clear why I was having to translate through it. And maybe it ends up being quite brilliant, but I think I'm not up for this one today. So I am gonna put it back down. I didn't realize I was pretty much gonna have to do a translation work. I'm a, it's gonna it's gonna go to the bottom of the pile basically that's it's 
I'm not up for that right now. I might be a little more choosy. I might look through these a little bit to see what I want to read. You know what I want to read next? I want to read Moving House next. I want to to get to a different I want to get a different perspective, a different country. And this one is a UK author, I believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, this is a poet who comes from Singapore and then moved to the UK and then back to Singapore again. Okay, and it's uh, Moving House moves on a big time and space map from Icelandic tales to the Malayan emergency and more contemporary dramas from the perspective of a Chinese Singaporean shaped by collective traditions uh, and histories described in this book, Writing in Britain, the poems model a sense of openness on the space of the page. Yes, let's read this. This will be something different. I was actually interested in this because I was interested in reading from a Singaporean poet because that's where my husband's family's from. So yes, this will be the third book of the evening. Oh, we've had to mixy mixy it up. You're reading a whole bunch of books in a row. I guess you gotta be a little more choosy than I was being. Also, before I get into this one, look how cute these pants are. You see this? These are my new pajama pants. They have constellations on them. Like Zodiac con constellations. I just wanted to share. Okay, just reading. I think this, this one is a good choice. Uh, it's very beautiful so far, but much more maybe ethereal is the word. There's a lot less concrete image to like settle into. It's a lot more kind of, I don't know, it's not really like it's vague or broad. I was a phantom for a day, you said, and we believed you then, set our own spells to paper like fire so they would catch, would work with some new and unheard of efficacy or even travel whole continents in a night as yours could, held aloft by the heat of our, of their own significance. I don't know, it's like, it's beautiful. I like it. I'm maybe, maybe getting tired already. I've been reading a long time now. <laughs> maybe all of this poetry, I just need to like let my brain finish absorbing it all. But I'll read a few more and then I might pause for the night and go back to this book in the morning. a new day hence the lack of makeup because I'm not planning on filming anything else today I had the corn cakes like I said I was going to and I'm going to keep reading moving house and see how far I get through that today well this is all workout equipment in case you're wondering I wanted to have Zuko in the frame but we bought some cheap workout equipment and turned part of my office into a little mini gym because we're not going to the gym anymore <laughs> Despite the fact that it's raining like pretty hard outside, which I don't know, I don't know if that shows up in the window at all, but it's raining pretty hard. For some reason, the leaf blower guy is still here blowing leaves, so I'm just gonna have to cut that out. I've just realized, because there was just a poem about the typhoon, or about the tsunami in um, Japan, well, and there have been a couple of others. There's been a couple of others that I didn't like recognize, uh, but after that one, I realized this one is a little bit similar to uh, Magic City Gospel in that it has a lot of history in it, a lot of history from different Asian countries. Because the one about Japan kind of stopped me, and I looked back through the other ones and was like, wait a minute, these are from like a, a few different countries. So it's similar. Uh, this author isn't like writing directly to specific figures. But they're talking about specific events in history, which is really interesting. Some of these, here I'll show you. There's little paragraphs at the top on some of them that give a little bit of background on what you're talking about. But like with this one, 
I recognized Sendai and then I was like wait a second I started paying more attention and was like oh like, that was actually that's a really good poem the passenger is really good yeah this is a really interesting one for history as well it's kind of cool to read poetry books that include a lot of history because you're getting it's it's different from reading a history book when you're reading poetry because you're getting something different you're seeing from a different perspective like passenger is about I mean well I'll read the little paragraph to you after the tsunami taxi drivers reported picking up ghost passengers who asked to be brought to their destination and then disappeared living leaving their fare unpaid and so then the poem kind of moves you through that it's kind of cool and it's kind of haunting I have learned something new here in North America, we spell curb like like street curb, C-U-R-B, in this book. And then apparently, everywhere else in the world, they spell it K-E-R-B. Don't know why we have to be different. I also peeked at the author information for this one, because I want to know some more about the poet. And he is prolific. He is a writer, editor, and translator based in Singapore, but he also was a former president of the Oxford University Poetry Society. He's co-editor of Oxford Poetry and the Kindling. He's won all these prizes. Like, this is a big time poet <laughs> who I had never heard of. That's, you get such tiny slivers of things. Like, like, the more you direct yourself outside your bubble, the more you realize how tiny your bubble has always been. And it's like you read a lot of things and you feel like you're reading like so many different people and like you've learned so many different things and then you find that there's this this other niche. It's like when I was super into, I'm gonna go on a tangent all of a sudden. It's like when I was super into J-pop and it was like everyone in the world must know about this because these like thousands and thousands of people know about this group and love this and are obsessed with it to the level I'm currently obsessed with it. And then you step right outside that and people have never even heard of that. And you're like, how could you have never heard of this? This is like a major phenomenon. But everyone's got their little bubbles. And here's this like prolific poet who writes these just stunning. I mean, this is not beginner poetry right here. This is definitely like you have to take a little more time. Like these poems are not written as accessibly as some of the other poems. This is something that you like, you have to dive into the poem and let the poem lead you and sometimes go back and reread the poem like this is not a collection you just whiz through this is one you really take a big bite of and kind of sit and chew for a little while and it's someone I'd never even heard of because they were outside of my bubble it's just crazy when you think about things like that okay this poem is really cool so it's called transformations or six translations of Meng Haoran's Spring Dawn for Hong Kong so it starts off with the Chinese which I cannot read and then the zero one I think I think maybe the literal translation it's pretty short then two it has this or on the number one sorry it has um, a line that's not italicized and the line that is the next poem is three whole stanzas and then it's like short long short long and I do wonder like how much these are translations, knowing that the poet is also a translator, how much these are translations and how much they're just elaborations. I really love this line. So this has kind of moved into, I believe, Icelandic? Yeah, a, tro it's a Traveler's Guide to Icelandic Folk Tales is what this has been elaborated on. But I love this line. It says, no one knows if this tale is told true or tall. <laughs> Okay, I finished reading Moving House. This was a really good collection. This was more of a challenge than a lot of other collections I've read recently. This was something really different and like, and very skillful. This was just a, a skillfully written collection. I really enjoyed it. Really good. I'm really glad I read this. I want to take just a moment to talk about the inauguration poet, Amanda Gorman, who, it was, it was really lovely. It was really enjoyable. Uh, I know it was a couple weeks ago, certainly by the point that I'm posting this, but even for me, it was a while ago. But it was really lovely, it's really lovely to have a poet speak and for poetry to once again be important to the White House. That was a really big part of Obama, is that he really, they cared about the arts, they cared about poetry, and it was nice for 
and to bring that back and to bring a really young poet, uh, someone who really speaks with the voice of America. And her poem was lovely. It was really good. I think I've heard that there was some negative criticism of her and it was like the poem was so powerful and so in the moment that a lot of their criticism is just null and void just because of that. I could see how if she were to be reading this, that poem on like a, a spoken word circuit, how she might have tweaked a few lines here and there in the end for just kind of flow and for impact and for, you know, audience reaction. It's one of those things, if she were doing this poem many, many times, there are a few places where she probably would have revised a little bit more. She wrote it just for the inauguration. I think they chose her and she wrote it in not that long a time. As we all know, the more you sit with poetry, the more things kind of gel together and it, the poetry gets better over time, typically. Uh, the more you practice and the more you work on it. So yeah, it might possibly not have been to everyone's taste, but I think she spoke very much with the voice of today. This is how spoken word poetry is now and what she was saying was important now and she was saying it very well and in a very impactful way and so I don't think anyone is like immune from criticism I just think a lot of people's criticism where they're like oh it's not really a poem or something is like I thought it was a lovely poem it was very good for the inauguration and there were parts that like as I was reading back I was like were I her I probably would have like altered this little tiny bit but does that impact the poem and like how well she read it and the impact it had on me listening to her read it no absolutely not so I just want to say that and then I think I'm only gonna read one more collection because the weekend is going to be over and I do have other things to do and I will have read well I've looked at five but I'll have read four of the poetry collections and I think that's really good I think I want to save Deaf Republic because now that I think about it just in case Michelle Flores does want to do a reading vlog or a buddy read for that, a bi-coastal buddy read for that. I want to save it so it'll be fresh for that. That means if I take this one out, and I'll take out Poem Crazy because that's, that's not really poetry either. So between the Octopus Museum and Postcolonial Love Poem, let's just sneak a peek into who the authors are. <laughs> okay, so both of these poets grew up in California, but Natalie Diaz is a Native American poet, and Brenna Shaughnessy is a Japanese American poet. So I just read an Asian centric poetry book. So maybe I will switch over and I will do Native American poetry book. That sounds really interesting. Um, so I will be starting this one next. There's a poem in here. They don't love you like I love you. That's about Maps by the Ya Ya Ya's. I love that band. I love that song. That was one of the songs that like I had a phase for. I was obsessed with it. Oh, it's a beautiful poem, but she's kind of tied it in and explained it. This is really good. I would definitely recommend this one. Her poetry, I mean, wouldn't I recommend all of them? Probably. Uh, but her poetry is beautiful, but in an accessible way. And she talks about things. This is a more modern, collection. Harold, I think they're lesbians. <laughs> so I actually forgot to film the wrap up last night because Josh came home and I forgot. So this is the third day. Yes, I'm wearing the same hoodie. This is my, I got home from work and took a shower and get to be comfy hoodie. But so this was a really good collection. Definitely lesbian, or at least there are a lot of poems that are undeniably about lesbian sex. So it got pretty steamy in a few places. Uh, it also talks about like res life. Um, obviously, I did not grow up on the reservation, but when I went to high school, I went to high school with a lot of kids who did grow up on the reservation, the Navajo reservation in Arizona. So it was actually, it was really, it was really interesting. It was really good. This was another one that was kind of packed with history that you don't always you know, learn about in school. For my weekend, I read these four lovely collections of poetry. I feel like I learned a lot. I kind of broadened my horizons and got to read some really good poetry. This is a fun little exercise. I don't know how interesting this is for you, but 
it was really fun for me. It was a lot of like really kind of deep, meaningful poems rather than just something kind of either fun or, I don't know, it, did, it didn't feel like a frivolous thing to do. It felt like I was really like back in school, really like learning quite a bit and reading some like really outstanding poetry. Once again, for the wrap up, I read Magic City Gospel by Ashley M. Jones, Double Jinx by Nancy Reddy, Moving House by Theophilus Quack, and Postcolonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz. I loved all of these. I think I talked already about what I would recommend for various people. I would say the most accessible ones were definitely these two, but they were also very packed with like culture and history. Uh, this one was a little more kind of literary, a little more fable-esque. And then this one was stunningly beautiful, but definitely one that you have to go in being ready to really delve into the poems. This was also packed full of history, but the poetry was very artful. And so this one I would definitely recommend if you love poetry, but if you're not so sure, I think this would be a difficult one. So yes, that's all of the books for this weekend. I'm definitely going to read the other ones. I think what do I have left? Of the ones I didn't get around to, I have the Octopus Museum, Deaf Republic, which I said I might, I might be saving for a buddy read, and then of course Poem Crazy, and I'll have to give Field another chance at some point. But that, maybe, maybe I'll see if someone wants to do a buddy reading of that one for me, because I feel like I might need some encouragement to do the translation work. Alright, that's all from me. Thanks for watching and let me know if you've read any of these poetry books and if you like them, if you have any recommendations for me, I would love to hear about those because I love picking up more poetry. I will talk to you again soon and good luck to you. Bye!